Welcome to the channel folks, my name's Shane. In today's video, we're checking out this new wireless pack from Sony Cake. This is the QWM10 2.4 gigahertz wireless system. This wireless pack features a single transmitter and receiver, and it can be connected to your favorite mirrorless camera, DSLR, camcorder, or mobile phone. If you know the channel, I've reviewed a lot of different wireless packs, so I'll put this through its paces. We'll do the all important vlogging and distance tests as well. Not only will this be a review of the Sony Cake QWM10, we're also gonna compare it up against the audio that you're listening to right now from my Saramonic Blink 500 Pro. Now, while the Saramonic Blink 500 Pro is far more expensive, it's essentially the same type of solution. So we're gonna see just how well this compares coming in at a lot less money. All of the audio today will be recorded thanks to my Panasonic Lumix GH6. And if you wanna check out the Sony Cake QWM10 wireless pack, I'll link it down in the description below. A massive thanks to Sonic Cake for sending this out for the review. I really appreciate it. Timestamps will be down in the description also if you want to skip ahead back or forth. Let's get into it. First up, let's do a quick unboxing. Included, we get this nice little carry bag that helps you organize all the cables and to keep the transmitter and receiver safe for transportation. We also get a single USB-A to dual USB-C cable. This is great. It means you get one cable to charge both packs at exactly the same time. Awesome. Included, we get a windsock. So if you plan on shooting outdoors in windy conditions, it's always great to have one of these on top of the transmitter. Included, we get two audio connectors. We get a TRRS connector, which is designed for mobile phones. So if you have a phone that still has a microphone jack, you can use it with that, no problems whatsoever. We also get a 3.5 millimeter standard audio cable that will work with any mirrorless camera or DSLR. Here's the transmitter and receiver up close. Now, if we take a look at the front, they both look almost identical. We get our power buttons on the front here and our USB-C charging ports on the side. Where they vary is the transmitter has a built-in omnidirectional microphone on the top here and a mute button, which also doubles as the pairing button, just in case it doesn't pair automatically. If you plan on getting a lavalier microphone, there is a 3.5 millimeter audio input over here. So it does accept labs. It just doesn't come with one in the box. The receiver has a 3.5 millimeter audio output. So I'll be using it with the TRS cable that I showed you just before. So this will go directly into my Panasonic GH6. On the top, we get real-time headphone monitoring, which is fantastic. Not all packs have this, and if your camera doesn't have a headphone jack, if you're working behind the camera, at least you'll have some audio that you can reference with a set of headphones. Another great addition is this high-pass filter. This allows you to remove low end. Say, for example, you're shooting next to a really busy street, there's lots of traffic noise. This will help reduce that low end directly on your recording, helping isolate your voice just that little bit better. The DB button is basically the volume button of this particular device. You can tap it three times and it will cycle through low, medium, and high output. Up next, we're gonna do a quick comparison between the Blink 500 Pro and the Sony KQWM10. Let's switch it over. And now I'm over to the Sony KQWM10 wireless pack. Can you hear a massive difference? I've tried to position the microphone in exactly the same spot. So this should be a fair comparison. The gain level on my camera looks almost identical. I'm gonna comment on all of the audio quality at the end, but before we do that, let's go back to the Blink 500. And now we're back to the Blink 500 Pro. Let us know if you can hear a massive sound quality difference between both of these packs using the built-in omnidirectional microphones. And now we're back to the Sony K QWM10. And for the rest of the video, I'll be using this microphone. Again, I'll comment on all of the audio quality stuff towards the end of this video. Mosquitoes are killing me. <laughs> Before we do the distance test, I just want to cover some of the important specifications and what this means in reality. So the great news is this is a 2.4 gigahertz pack, which means you get exceptionally low latency, which means there's not gonna be any weird lag between the signal coming from the transmitter to the receiver. The built-in microphone has an omnidirectional polar pattern, which means you can put this in any position and it will pick up audio. I'd say you've seen other content creators in interview situations using these wireless mics. And that's because that omnidirectional polar pattern also works great for interviews. The built-in microphone also has a full frequency range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, which is the full spectrum of human hearing. That's without using the high pass filter. Both the transmitter and receiver are very light coming in at 26 grams. So if you need a single transmitter to receive a wireless pack for travel, this makes a whole lot of sense. It's quite uncanny how light they actually are. We get lithium ion technology in both the transmitter and receiver. They take three hours to charge and then you get up to 10 hours of use. That's insane considering they're only 26 grams each. Furthermore, these will work anywhere from minus five degrees Celsius all the way up to 50. 
So basically anywhere except for the poor Canadians. <laughs> this pack basically offers everything that more expensive packs offer, except the case itself doesn't charge the units. That's why you pay more for certain packs on the market, again, like the Blink 500 Pro. And now over to the all-important distance test. Let's give this a go. So what this will hopefully achieve is a two-in-one test. One, we're gonna see whether or not it works line of sight. So while I'm facing the camera, and every now and then I'm gonna turn around to see if it cuts out. And if it does cut out, we're gonna see how long it takes to recover, as this is also very important. Some packs, once you lose line of sight and it breaks that connection, it doesn't recover very fast and you have no audio. So we're gonna see how well this works as I walk backwards. I'm not gonna go back to the entire 50 meter range. I find that a little unnecessary, especially for solo content creators. <laughs> Odds are you're not gonna be 50 meters away from your camera at any one time, especially if you're doing anything in a public park, for example, like I am. So we're gonna stop around here. This has gotta be 25, to close to 30 meters away. As I turn around, if it cuts out, I'll leave some annotations on screen. I expect the audio signal to break at this distance. It's just pretty normal. So let's walk back towards the camera to replicate that of a walk and talk shot. You might be behind the camera filming someone else walking towards the camera, for example. And this is the kind of performance that you can expect. There's some cars going along the little road here. And can you hear much of my footsteps? Is there any physical noise from the microphone as I walk and talk? It should sound pretty good, hopefully. So I'll comment on all of this in just a moment once I get home because there's lots of mosquitoes and two, it's cold. <laughs> now, if you plan on buying this pack and you want to use a third party lavalier microphone, this audio test is for you. Now, this will sound vastly different to that of the onboard microphone. It won't have the same kind of fidelity, but it has a more isolated sound. Sometimes lavalier microphones can be great for that particular use case, or if you don't want a big square thing sitting on your shirt. Let's take a look at the high pass filter. What you're listening to now is the microphone pack in standard mode. Let's switch it over. And now I'm over to the high pass filter mode. Take a listen to the low end and let me know if you can hear a difference. Let's switch it back. And back to standard mode just so you can compare the difference. Just know if you see the light on the receiver flash red, it means you're in standard mode. If it flashes this green or yellow color, it means we're in the high pass filter mode. And back to the high pass filter mode. There's definitely a difference and this will come in really handy when you're outdoors. Now, if you plan on doing any type of vlogging, this pack makes a lot of sense because you can just turn the camera wherever you like, but your audio is always going to sound great. I've just got the microphone right here. We do a quick walk and talk. And after listening back to my test from doing this yesterday, this works extremely well. Even without the high pass filter mode on, you get great audio with very little foot noise. So for vloggers, this makes sense. Thanks for watching, folks. My name's Shane. I'm going to wrap this video up by giving you my final thoughts about this wireless pack. We're going to start with the all-important audio quality. Audio quality-wise, this pack has completely surprised me. It sounds far better than more expensive packs, and it's about 95% of the way there when I compared it up against my Saramonic Blink 500 Pro, which has basically set the standard in terms of audio quality. When it came to the distance test, this pack far surpassed my expectations, working better than just about every other pack I've reviewed on the channel. If you haven't seen the full playlist, I'll link it up in the cards. When it comes to the overall user experience, this pack is really simple to get going. They pair beautifully together as soon as you take them out of the box and you'll be good to go. I like the fact the battery life lasts as long as it does. When it comes to value for money, I would have no hesitations recommending this. It comes in at $90 at the time of filming. I think based on its sound quality and what you get in the box, this is a really hard pack to beat. Lastly, in terms of usability, just know there's no LCD screens built into these units, so you can't cycle through menus or anything like that. It's basically you turn them on and you're good to go, and all of the notifications are via those little LED lights on top of each unit. Thanks for watching, folks. My name's Shane, a massive thanks again to Sonic Cake for sending this out for the review. I really appreciate it. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know and I'll respond as soon as I can. And don't forget, you can check out this pack using the links in the description below. Thanks again. Catch you soon. See ya.